Um, Lily? Are you gonna just ban now? Draft first. Alright. Unbelievable. This is like the worst game of my life. But, hello everyone! Welcome to the AOC Pro Cup Season 1. This is Game 2 of a best of three between Gigabyte, Mineski, and First Departure. Thank you, of course, to AOC for sponsoring this tournament. Shout out to DaftBet.net, esports betting, and a very kind thanks to Dota Talk for letting us cast this game. This yeah. series, in fact, which has gone for nearly three hours, and we've only managed to play one game. Yeah, I think it's this is the first night. time. If you think about it, three hours for one game. <sighs> it's it's kind of awful. Game is hard. Let's be honest. Radiant Game is hard. Okay, and we still have to remake once again after we're done there drafting. Let's assume Mineski's pings are playable, which I don't know if they are. Yeah, I guess not. No, uh, they're only at 200, they'll be around. Ah, oh, jeez. It's still a very exciting draft thus far. We do see first departure with the Alchemist, the Morphine, the Clockwork. I think they're going to pick up a Rubik Dying next on the side of Mineski. Um, mm -hmm. okay, oh, yeah, you called so it. So good at telling Damn. the future. And then a Shadow Demon from First Departure. I could have called that one too if I had a. Uh... Yeah, but now it's going to be interesting. <laughs> no, I'm guessing no. a Sand King. No, I'm kidding. No, no, no. no. Like I said, I think <laughs> something like a Park Luna could be really, really good for yeah. Mineski. Um, give him really good mid game control, a nice carry that can finish the game. You know, early enough that Morphling won't be able to come online. That's kind of the the biggest hope, I would say. And I mean, Luna just fantastic with the older time. The Tinker. What? Oh, you must be a little deliriously happy. I know how much you love that Tinker. Yeah, it's gonna be awesome. Because we will never see a Tower Four if Tinker isn't dead. But you know what? Screw it. Because there's a Clockwork, and Clockwork can make some some amazing work of a Tinker. That like, if Clockwork hooks in and he's got a blade mail, Tinker's just gonna kill himself. And then it's alright. And Tinker's gonna. Reserve Tinker's time. gonna die, towers are gonna fall, game is gonna be done, and first departure will be looking good. No, but seriously, um, the Tinker pickup is super strong if there's nothing which has a long range initiation, and the Clockwork is one of those heroes. He can scout out the Tinker with a rocket, he can hook in with a hookshot, then there should be some some major. Um, help coming out from the Shadow Deem with a Soul Catcher, or even the Alchemist, just with an Acid Spray as well as in Concoction. And this is usually enough to bring down the Tinker. Tinker relies so much on his positioning, so if you give it, give the Clockwork a nice line to hook in, yeah, Clockwork can make the uh, stuff, like, quite a bit of stuff happen. But it all depends how well the Clockwork can get his levels up. If Clockwork is severely really underleveled, and the Tinker is just farming away, and, and got his BOTs up by, like, I don't know, 8 minutes and something, and it's already tanky-ish, it's gonna be very hard. Well, I mean, Tinker is a really strong late game carry, I suppose, in terms of like when he gets that late game, he becomes really quite unstoppable um, and quite scary, I suppose. So that's something that First Departure are going to have to consider. I mean, Morphling is very scary in the late game as well, but is he going to be good enough to kind of out carry if Tinker? That's the, the question that, that needs answering. Well, um, obviously, a 6 solid Morphling can out carry pretty much everything in the book. But Even if he gets permanently hexed, he can't. Yeah, that's right. Like, how well is Tinker going to fare against this guy? But there's of course always going to be a Shadow Deem disruption, there's always going to be, you know, a clockwork disrupting things. So, yeah, they do have some nice supporting cast in order to go along with this uh, Morphling. And I do see the synergy already coming out. If you have the Acid Spray, as well as of course Soul Catcher and Disruption, just as we pointed out, when the game was actually still in there and we didn't have some a thousand of disconnections and all that jazz, it's just a very solid draft. It's n it's not too flashy. Of course, Clocker can do some flashy plays, but at all around, it's just very very solid. And yeah, we're gonna see how they're gonna fare against Mineski's uh, Tinker pickup. Of course, Auto Titan, Visage, Rubik, they're gonna provide a lot, but is it gonna be enough against the Morphling? One thing though, the Astral Aura is completely gonna wreck the Morphling. The Ethereal. The. Yeah, I don't know. Like. Morphling relies so much on his Aegei to, to, to get some arm up. And other Titan. Wow, a nice soccer. I didn't see this guy oh. in CA for a long ass time. Yep, yep. I understand what you're saying. Now, yeah, the Elder Titan Astral yeah, is going to just. Um, yeah. The natural order is going to destroy him. Yeah, actually, that's a very good point that since Morphling does shift to agility, that's uh, base stats, isn't it? Um, so his arm is all just going to get wrecked by the natural order. And a nice talk 
pick up as well. I like that. I mean, this is a lot of early game aggression from First Departure. They've got three heroes that can really dive towers quite confidently. In fact, four when you count Morphling, who's sometimes, you know, you see Morphling in the early game diving up to the tier fours because he's got that replicate, he's got the waveform, and he's very hard to take down unless you have a lot of heavy stuns. And Maneski at the moment are lacking in heavy stuns, so... Nightstalker, I think, is a really good pickup. He's going to counter that Tinker perfectly. Before Tinker gets up with those uh, Blink Dagger, he's going to be in trouble. And even once he does get a Blink Dagger up, if Nightstalker rushes that Argonim Scepter, well, you can't blink into the trees if Nightstalker can see everywhere. So I think that's a, a really smart and fun pickup. It's going to be uh, quite nice to watch that. And now Maneski, a Templar Assassin. Oh, wow. That's Jules' as Templar Assassin for sure. I've seen him play that before. Oh yeah, he picks it up. Also one thing, um, my dear Twitch chat, yes, Mineski picks up the Tinker, and it was last game Departure, drafting it, but it was after the Sand King already got randomed. So the Tinker was not not set in stone at all. Like, it was just one pick to get the graph uh, to remake and all that. So no one cheated, everyone's fine, and we do have, of course, way more disconnects coming on, because we did have four plays on the side of Departure in this game. So I'm gonna re the game, and then we should be good to get. Should be good to go. Fingers crossed. We can only hope. Now, I'm gonna be devil's advocate here, and I'm gonna say there's gonna be some more disconnections. Because if I say there's none, I'm gonna jinx it, so I don't wanna jinx don't it. Do this to me, pimp! What? Like, what is it? It's gonna be 1 am at you? So, it's plenty of time to go. And, and then we've got another best of three after this, which is meant to be starting now, so... Well, I certainly can't do it, but... Yeah, enjoy it. Yeah. Have fun. <laughs> so... <sighs> How can we need three hours for a best of three? Like, I'm <laughs> I'm sitting in my chair, I don't know even know. I, I really don't know what's going on, and I'm just... I need some more milk in here. Ugh. Man, game is so hard today. We don't even know what to talk about now. Where is... Where is the fifth guy of FD? For the love of God. Move it. No, don't tell me this is gonna be... Oh, come on guys, please, please. <laughs> uh. What's this guy doing? I don't even know. Get out of the channel, bird. <sighs> yeah, let's just... Can you guys move it? Yeah, bye bye. If you're Let's going go. to another game, go. Go. And stop making smiley faces because I'm now getting annoyed. Thanks, see you. Go, go, go. All Move right. it. Um, all pick, Singapore, AOC. Let's Don't forget go. the ticket. Let's do it. Now we're finding server for another minute because CA servers are so dumb. You know what's funny? There's 7.2k viewers on the stream and I feel so sorry for them. I feel sorry for the people who've been here from the start who just want to know if their rares are safe or not. Yeah. Well, you're never going to find out. Where are you, server? Apparently I have a German accent. How can this come? I'm not sure. That's really weird. How come you have a German accent? Yeah, How I did don't that know. happen? Wow. Did I, you, I like, don't get it. practice it? Yeah, I guess. Or... I, I guess I, I had a meeting with the governor. With a governor. The governor. Amazing. All right. You wouldn't think just sitting here, like waiting for a server, could be so exhausting, or waiting yeah. for a game could be so exhausting. But like, I'm actually tired right now. After all this waiting, the anticipation. I, I, I honestly just don't know anymore. I, I'm, I'm just completely out of thoughts. I'm just. <gasps> Jesus Christ, we got a game. Now. Holy smokes. Okay, my dear chat. 
trivia question for you. How many disconnects are going to be in this game? Is it going to be more How than How many three? people bet? Huh? I was going to say, how many people bet that Maneski get like five minutes into the game and go, this lag is unplayable, let's reschedule. Ah, oh, no, we can't do that. I'm just going to check picks right now. And pinks are on 100. That's great. That is good. We might actually see an even game loss. I mean, this game. Last game was ridiculously laggy for her. Did I just kick myself from the game? What? I just got kicked from the game. You got kicked from the game? Yeah, I went into console and it kicked me from the game. There we go. Ah, uh, who? Who? Yeah, I'm in the game. I'll cut you. Okay. So, which animal is this? You gonna draw a picture or something? No, check mid lane. What was it? Oh, it's a cat. No, it's a frog. <laughs> I'm not a good artist. That's my cat. You know why oh it's my god, it's got, the, it's got the fattest chin! <laughs> That's cute. Well, he's not talking. Who admit now? Yeah, game is horrid. Okay, so it's not Mila, not Pew Pew, not Cyclops, it's not the Chinese guy. I wish I didn't tell you who failed to load. Who could it be? There's literally nobody else here. Was it me? No, 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 no. When you were disconnected, it was like five or five out of seven. So it wasn't. Everyone's going to. An... Oh please no. Everyone's leaving the lobby. Do I rehost? I'm not in the lobby right now. I'm just gonna rehost. I'm in game progress. All right, let's do it once again. <sighs> this is no Cyclops. This is my channel. <laughs> get out, Cyclops. No, you can get out. You of... Thanks. My channel. You leave. They're gonna get stalked now. This was like everyone loaded. Everyone was talking. Yeah, maybe Apart the Chinese um, Chinese guy. No, he here. was talking. Okay. But who? Please, Jules. Yeah, Jules is in the lobby, thank god. Okay. Singapore, AOC. Don't okay. fail it. <laughs> Just don't. I'm dying. I'll die with you. And we... No, okay. I'm, I'm, not, gonna, I'm not gonna go down this route. <laughs> ah. Did I not mute myself again? Oh, never mind. Okay, I'm, I'm good. Like usually we we actually are doing fine in breaks in between breaks like it's all right it's really all right like we got some we got some some nice topics we we can talk about some 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 TI stuff but this time around we are not going to fill 3 hours of airtime it's just not going to happen guys i'm really sorry but it's just not going to happen I don't At think this there's point anything else time, i can I even know. talk about like there's just been too many pauses and breaks today and now we can't find the server Whew. You know what? Stay, stay for a second. I'm gonna fetch up some milk because I can't work without milk. Second. I really want milk and cookies. Milk and cookies would make me feel so much better right now. Oh my god, we found a game. It's happening. 
Okay, apparently we're not professional. You know what? We're not. Thank God we're not. Well, I'm not. Okay, six of six spectators. Everyone is here. Please do not be alarmed. This is gonna be a game, because we hadn't had one in a long ass time. <laughs> and we are actually in the game. Holy smoking balls. It's on. It's so amazing to see a Tinker. Finally, I'm gonna get the, my most beloved hero. I'm gonna see him being played. It's gonna be amazing! Um, to to some, uh, you know, to to some extent. Oh, how he, you know. Oh, actually, his responses are really cool. <laughs> I like Paw Man. What the? What the? I travel to the mall, bought some grocery, come back and still in the lobby. Ah, <laughs> 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 oh, we've been in the lobby for so long. I just want to see some Dota. And now Kai's AFK. No. There he is. Oh, God damn it. You oh, guys have no clue how awesome Milk is. How can you flame Milk? Milk is pretty good. Like, this one is just so amazing. Like, Germany's got some, some kick-ass milk. Anyways. Okay. D -d -d -d, this is what we got. Everyone else is here as well. <laughs> Blaze is asking for the next game, obviously. And we're in the game! And we're in! Oh my god! Oh my god! Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the main event of the AUC Pro Cup. In the Radiant side of things, we're gonna have first departure going up against Mineski. Why don't you go and introduce Mineski today? Well, we have got Jay on the Tinker. Oh, this is gonna be interesting. So Jay's gonna be playing the Tinker, heading towards the easy lane. We're gonna have Oa playing the Rubik. Please, no! Don't do this to me. Uh, G is gonna be playing the Visage, heading towards the top lane as well. Jesse Vash on the off lane Elder Titan, and Jules on the mid lane Templar Assassin. Yep, 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 yep. And it's gonna be kick ass to see Chibi going up against. Uh... Yeah, well, the Tinker on his morphling, heading down to the bottom lane. It's going to be uncontested free from with this guy. There's going to be Lobby supporting him on his, uh, well, it's kind of signature Alchemist. I did cast him on, like, every freaking game on the Alchemist, except from the last one. Of course, uh, Tepe, a.k.a. Kai, on the Shadow Demon. Mid lane is going to be handled by the Night Stalker, which is be played by Chaos. And, of course, Chains on his off lane Clockwork. No, so, in terms of the... Don't do this no, no, anyway. No, no, no. So in terms of who's playing what now and the who, what, which teams. So Jay on the carry tinker is going to be quite interesting, but it's, it's worth mentioning Mineski haven't really picked up a hard carry, whereas Sapache have got that morphling. So Chibi playing that morphling, going to be in that farming role yet again. And I have to say, I do like that quite a lot. Um, like I said, I think Chibi's a fantastic carry player, and while he's very strong in the mid lane too, KS is less fantastic in the carry role. So I think putting chains... You know, in the off lane, KS in the mid lane, and Chibi in the carry role is going to suit them best. We'll have to see what they do in the future, but I do like this. So it's going to be basically Jay on the Tinker versus Morphling being played by Chibi. And if Jay can get up a really fast boots of travel, he should be pretty good at just shutting down Chibi's farm. Because there's one thing that a Morphling is not so good at in the early game, and it's, I guess, staying alive. Because he needs to morph agility, typically, to keep his uh, attack damage up. So as you can see, he's got 44 base damage. It's pretty pathetic, and he needs those agility stats to kind of keep himself up. Uh, in those high last hits. So here like Tinker they can you know, max that rocket, max that laser and just teleport to a lane and just spam on Chibi and force him out of lane constantly over and over again is going to do a really good job of shutting down his farm. And of course at the same time Jules can just be free farming and you know a fast desolator on Jules and he's just going to rip Chibi to shreds. And that's a really good combo with the uh, Elder Titan with that natural order and the negative armor coming up from the meld and you know like I said I think a desolator is going to be a fantastic item choice this game. And potentially in the early game you know, right about the 20 minute mark is when Mineski should get the ball rolling and just, you know, stomp all over this morphling. Yeah, absolutely. So they, they are on some sort of a clock, but of course they do can just defend the lanes quite easily with the Tinker. And yeah, just as you said, it's going to be interesting to see if the Tinker decides to just push the lanes out or actually use his rockets in order to force down the morphling back into his own base. And of course morphling's not the best jungle farmer, so whenever he can't farm a lane, it's actually kind of huge for him, so... Oh well, on mid lane, it's it's already going kind of bad-ish for KS, just because Refraction is helping out so nicely against the Night Stalker, so... 
Yeah, Night Circus gonna, gonna not have the best time. Uh, speaking of not having a good time, Chains on the top lane is getting initiated. There was a lift already, so it's not gonna be it. Yeah, just way too close here. And, well, 80 HP are still plenty to survive. Oh. And Yeah. Putting himself up, but he actually went for the rocket level 1 rather than the power cog. So he's not gonna be able to just pull the lane back using the, the cogs like oh, he would so expect. Close. He did do a, a nice job the there. Yeah, but he, he didn't get to do it, and the camp is going to be so uh, pullable. But it's going to be hitting level 2 very soon, so it should be good to just start pulling the lane back at that point. Um, which will be nice for him. At the same time, though, uh, Chibi is getting literally completely not a free farm. The lane is pushing, but the pulls are going to start happening now by Tepe just getting some more farm onto Kai. And, I mean, it's, it's quite nice. I mean, Jesse Vash definitely wants the levels in farm. He's got his boots up already, so now he just needs the soul ring, and then it'll be good to just harass... Uh, Chibi quite effectively out of the lane, but at the same time, I mean, Chibi's going to get what he needs. So once he gets that ring of health up, he's not going to care too much about the astral spirit spam that we're going to be seeing. Yeah, absolutely. So, of course, astral spirit spam kind of annoying, but it got nerfed quite heavily. Although still, like Jesse Vash can still try to harass out the Morphling quite nicely. And um, looking at the CS, actually, Morphling just did a great job at last sitting, even though there was a the lane pushing. So, yeah, Chibi once again, he's showing off, kind of. He's just nailing the CS and <laughs> now double damage on the Shadow Demon. Can they make something happen onto Jesse Vash? It's going to be the question. But Jesse Vash so far playing very defensively. Um, there's a ward here, so they absolutely know there's a Shadow Demon uh, with a DD activated. And of course, Lobby now waiting in the wings. He's going to have his concoction up, but Jesse Vash just trying to block the creeps. And um, yeah, nice play so far. Very safe play from Mineski's side of things. Uh, change though. Mm, could be in a bit of trouble. That doesn't look like it. He's alright. Yeah, I mean, I don't think the killing potential is too high in any of these lanes. I do think G and Owa should start roaming soon. I mean, if they can go get a couple of kills or at least force KS out of lane, it's going to be better for them. Because once this 4-minute mark hits, KS is going to become scary. Because that's when Nightstalker, well, he needs to start snowballing. Uh, Nightstalker, typically, if he doesn't have a good first or second night since the night change, he did become slightly more viable in that respect. But if his first and second night are that good, it does mean that he kind of fades out into obscurity and he's not going to be that useful um, in the later phases of the game. Whereas, like I said, a fast target of Scepter on this Night Stalker is going to be ideal for countering out the Tinker. So, I mean, if they could get a gank going down to him to shut him down, that'd be perfect. But it looks like they're not interested in rotating at all. They just want to protect the farm of uh, Jay and just ensure that Jay gets up super fast boots of travel, which he should have reasonably soon. He's already on 1,000 gold with his boots up, so... I mean, that's three minutes into the game and he just needs a... You know, another 1,000 he's done, so should be expecting maybe 5 or 6 minute boots of travel at this rate. Yeah, he's swung away quite nicely, and of course, as soon as they get the BOTs up, the Star Ring will be inbound in just a second. Um, interesting to note though, the lasers are actually being maxed out by Jay, so it looks like more of a fighting build, which you usually don't see. Usually it's just one point in the laser to get the missed chance up, and just go from there. And, oh, mid lane, Jules is going in very aggressively, he's gonna take a... Well, he's gonna take the first blood, and... Looks like he's actually kind of fine. Oh no, Scratch it. He's gonna get brought down right now. Clockwork picking up the kill with the rocket. Nicely done. Lobby picking up the experience. Wow, that was huge for Lobby. Lobby's now level 4. And Clockwork got experience from this as well. That was actually really big. Like, of course they did kind of fed first blood. But Lobby level 4, Clockwork level 4. This is, this is good. Like this, okay. Yeah, that was really nicely done and just... I mean, first play going the way of Jules is fantastic for him. He's got his face bits up now, but still, this is a point where KS starts to roam. And we can see already him heading to the top lane. And since he died, they don't know where he is. He could be running back to that mid lane. He could be heading to the top lane like we know he oh. is. He could be heading to the bot lane, so... I'm dropping frames. Just, um, what the freaking hell? I've got a bad connection to the server, but who cares? Maybe there's going to be some, some animation like in the team fights. Yeah, the top I, lane, I just KS. lagged out too then. Okay, so yeah, always going to get in the yeah, take it away. <laughs> Huge amount of damage onto Owa there. Owa's just chasing him down. Chainsaw is going to be the one. He just tanks all the damage. That level 2 razor and laser and rocket doing massive amounts of damage. He's trying to get to Owa. He will finally get that last hit. Now even Shadow Demon rotating in. Getting the disruption of Chaos just healing himself up. Ready to go back in. Jay needs to be his primary target. And oh my god. Kai getting very, very low. But Chaos is coming back in. He's not going to have the vision though to get that other kill. And so Jay is just going to hide in the bushes here. 1.7k gold in the bank for him. And he's not even afraid Chaos is still here. But he doesn't care. He wants to get his farm up, and ultimately, uh, one for one trade, I believe. Losing the clockwork in exchange for a support Rubik. However, it is worth mentioning, definitely, that it was KS who got that kill, and he didn't die for it. So, yep. I would say it's kind of worth it, because you want that, you know, that nice stalker to get the kills in the first and second night. Whereas if a clockwork dies, it sucks, it does. 
feeding kills to Jay is not good, but you know, it's it's gonna be more important that KS gets a good start. Yeah, absolutely. I mean Jay he will take off anyways, and he's looking to go for the fighting build. Lasers as well as rockets are being maxed right now. Okay, it's just narrowly avoids some sort of gank here. Uh, I was rotating in as well as, of course, Jules. Hmm, no, he's alright, I guess. He's waiting for the rune. It's gonna spawn in just a few seconds. Not sure what he's gonna do with this. Um, KS. KS is gonna get the lift off here in just a second. Oh, close call there. They're gonna get changed though. So maybe change trying to bail his body out. Not gonna happen though. Owen's now completely trapped. What is Owen doing? I'm not sure. Anyways, triple rotation now for the side of first departure. Quite nicely done. There's gonna be disruption. Destroying pretty much all the shields in the world. Refraction charges. And she was... Looks like Jules was blocked in actually. Now he's got his face put up. And now he's fine. And I'm having some more animation lag. Bzzz. Yeah, that's me too. It's the server. It's not you. Everyone's just running on the spot, so... Yeah, okay, gas. That's... New feature. That's C server for you at night time. It oh, goes to it? crap. Denied. Yeah, happens okay. every night. But anyway, um... So now, yeah, a nice start for KS, honestly. At the moment, 2 to 1 on him. He is falling behind in levels to Jules. He's been sitting in that lane, just farming up. And Jules now should have that drums done fairly soon. He's already got the brace of the bottle, the phase boots, and feeling quite nice for himself. Um, KSO trying to decide where to gank, and it looks like Elder Titan could be his primary target, and he will be finding... Oh, Jesse Vash tanking up a huge, huge stack there. However, could he get a... No, it looks like he's going to be able to get this last kill on Jesse Vash. Do drop Sever. frames there, but does it matter? <sighs> he will get that uh, killing spree there, and a huge stack they've noticed, which is all for the Tinker. Good um, awareness of where, you know, he might be by KS, just knowing that Jesse Vash probably tanking up that stack there. To get it ready for the Tinker to come and farm it up once he's got this travel. Jesse Vash, once again, they do anticipate, they know how he plays because those teams, they know each other in and out. And uh, while there's the gank on the top lane of things, uh, looks like Chain knows what's up. No, he doesn't. Now he tries to pull the wave. So Chains can get down as well as Jesse Vash. What's going to happen first? He's going on to Owa, so J Chains now going there. Jesse Vash taking the brunt of the damage here. KS evading the stun here. Now Chains is going to get dropped. Owa is running away. Bottom lane though. KS is picking up the kill. Nicely done. So much action on the whole freaking map. But oh, they're going to get the counter kill. So Jesse Vash finally finding something. Dominating streak, going the way of the Elder Titan and he didn't get any experience from this because he was not alive, but he did get a lot of gold. And he's lacking severely in the experience range. Look at the levels coming out. 3, 4, 4, this is all the side of Mineski, and then 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, and 6. Alright, that was a bit too much 5s, but anyways, <laughs> everyone on the side of Departure <laughs> does have some nice levels up, and this just helps out quite nicely because Lobby with his levels can do a crap ton of stuff, and he needs his level 6 and he's gonna have it in just a bit. The Shadow Demon even maxing out Shadow Poison, actually. I would have expected to see Soul Catcher. Um, but yeah. Shadow Just Poison got buffed pretty significantly the last patch. Uh, I'm not sure about this actually, because if you get five stacks up in a team fight, there was something very wrong with the team fight. But still, it's 50 damage a stack, and even if you get two, this is ridiculous. It's like I wonder if the players are getting it too. Um, yeah, well, it even if to. you get say two or three stacks, it's gonna be, you know. Yeah, it's alright. As mean, it's much as a, as a big nuke in an AoE. But anyway, we'll have to see how it goes. But in mid lane, KS is going to get initiated. He gets lift up a huge nuke onto Oa. Oa is forced to run back. And KS now is going to be diving. Oa regrets his decision immediately. But nice juking will make him get away. No, it won't. He will get that last void off. Just taking him down. And now Jules, no, he can't chase that. There will be a rotation from Jesse Vash coming in. But still, level 3 on Jesse Vash. He can't do anything other than probably die at this point. Yeah, and what nice. a failed gank. Good turnaround yeah. by KS, though. Yeah, although I have to hand it to KS, like, this guy, he saw the opportunity to kill Owa. And just going in super aggressive, he, he dove a tower against, against Rubik, who's got disabled. I'm not sure if he clicked on the Rubik, because Rubik was completely out of mana at that point. But if there would have been a Fate Bolt, it would have been kind of hard. Um, hmm. So yeah, it would have been super close. And of course, Jesse Vash even rotating in. And it, it was all for naught, and yeah. So far, I mean, first departure, they're making the plays here. Only Seven Grace is of course going to be the Tinker, and he's farming up the nice stack. He's got level 3 in the march. Indy's got a Sol Ring up, so... Wow, and nearly dropping there to the Rocket. Very smart play coming up from Chains. His Rockets were on point this game. He took up a kill in the mid lane. He is scouting out quite nicely. Okay, so... Yeah, Well, his Tinker is so at the point where he's going to come very, very scary very soon. I mean, he's taken that whole stack oh, now. Yes. He's got 1k gold, Boots of Travel, Sol Ring. Ooh, KS. Oh, he's getting a lot of damage there, but there will be a nice disruption. Saving his life at the moment. Jules wants to go in. We'll get a nice... Big hit off onto Pei, but of course, he hasn't got Meld up, but he's going to go down anyway. Dominating streak onto Jay there without March of the Machines doing massive, massive damage. Just laying down more of them. Level 4 March of the Machines, 10 minutes into the game, is quite scary. 
I mean, they just do so much damage, ripping through everyone. It does mean that if Jay can get to the team fights before everyone else, he's going to be able to lay down just a wall of, you know, back off ruinous coming out from those marches, and it's going to make team fighting very, very hard for first departure. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, Chains does get some nice and needed experience now in the mid lane, and he actually has to go for a level 2 in the Rocket Flare, which is nice because you essentially, it's not really doubling the damage because it would be level 3, but it's still a crap ton of more damage, and you can of course push out the lanes with it. So that's kind of nice in order to counteract the Tinker. Um, and level 3 Battery Assault, so as soon as he level, levels it up to 8, I guess it's going to be a level 4 Battery Assault, and this is the point where the Tinker has to be super careful. And 1k bank now onto Chains as well, so he can go for the Blade Mail, if he decides to go for it, but now for the time being mid lane, it's going to be initiation onto Jules. Nice soul catcher being deployed, Alchemist TPing in as well. There's going to be familiars here, but not going to be enough because they're going to get farmed as well. No, it doesn't look like it. Very big pick off on the Templar Assassin. Yeah, and um, it's definitely great for them to take down Jules. I mean, the primary targets are just going to be Jay and Jules. The other three heroes are just kind of auxiliary heroes designed to just make the team fights a little bit harder, but. The more they take down Jay and the more they take down Jules, the better things are going to be, especially because Jules isn't going for that Blink Dagger build. He's going for the uh, race car TA build. I do find it very interesting he still hasn't leveled up a single point in Meld, but I'm assuming that's going to be coming soon. Um, but yeah, I mean, so he's farmed down while Chibi is still free farming. And Chibi is 87 CS. He got that Lincoln's up 11 minutes, 12 minutes, I suppose, into the game. Lincoln's is done on him. And, I mean, he's, what, topping the net worth charts? No, actually, Tinker's topping it by far, but yeah, still. Yeah, he got killed top yeah, just yeah. a bit. Eats is done. Oh well. First, you just move it is on point this game. They always find the pickoffs every freaking time, and this is exactly how you're gonna play a Night Stalker. Yeah, he didn't get the kill, but who cares? Like, he's kind of snowballing right now, and he's got a Vitality Booster, casual one, and that. Uh, there's gonna be, though, some major initiation bottom lane. Uh, Jules trying to find Chibi. Not gonna happen though. Can Chains position himself correctly? Yes, he can. Nice hook onto Jules as well. There's gonna be a replicate and an easy kill going the way of the Morphling. So this is where he's gonna pick up some pace. And he, of course, does have a Slink and Stun at 12 minutes in. And yeah, he's looking very good. Um, CS wise, 87 CS into 12 minutes. This is, I don't think it's perfect, but it's very near up there. Maybe he missed like 2 or 3 CS. Yeah, he's doing very, very good on the farm. However, this is the point where Jay is going to start harassing him to the max, because Jay's got that Blink Dagger up, so he's going to be good to go to whatever lane that Chibi is in and just spam out the rocket heat seeking missile, heat seeking missile, heat seeking missile, over and over and over again, and really start to just shut down Chibi's farm. And I think that is going to be, of course, his next target. I mean, you can see now he's still just farming the Ancients, ensuring that he just keeps his GPM up, but... I mean, he needs to start shutting down Chibi. That's kind of his job at this point, is ensuring that Chibi doesn't get any more farm than he, uh absolutely has to. Yeah, because he can farm while doing so. Like, he can lay down a marsh yeah. on, a, on a lane where Chibi actually farms. Do some rockets, like, spam, spam rocket once or twice. You've got your soul ring up, you've got your bottle up, so you can always just rely on those. And yeah. But so far, very good rotation from Departure, but they have to keep it up. If ever there's going to be some opportunity that Chains needs to find, it's going to be on, yeah, on the Tinker once again. And yeah, it's hard. Catching out a Tinker is nothing easy. Especially with the Blink Dagger, but yeah, first departure, they can certainly do it because they showed us how well they can play in the last game. Of course, Mineski hit had like 400 ping, and it's incredibly hard to play oh, with 400 ping. But J, J, J. Oh, he's gonna be right. Yeah. KS really needs waiting. to find some more kills, though. He's, and he got he's spot waiting out. to pick up the Tinker. Um, he did get spot out, so J needed to back out. But I mean, at this point, KS has had, what, five kills, which is okay, but he's died three times. And this is the point of the game where he oh, really wow. needs to be stuck making a difference. And look at Jay, he's been such a total rude guy. Look at all those marches he's laying down behind the tower now. And look how much damage poor Tepe is taking. He's going to take a fall. If Jay can throw out that rocket, he will get that rocket out. Bottling him up, but mm, not going to be enough. Level 3 rocket just one. takes him down. Fantastic teamwork there. I mean, that Astral Spirit was what was giving him vision for him to do, be able to do that. So really well done there. Yeah, and of course, familiar. Man, that's just the power of the march. I mean, he's just saying you can't defend because oh, wow, this whole wow, wow, area. Oh wow, 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 wow! Look at bottom lane though. He just keep it into two KS as well as Chibi. They're gonna bring him down. Very important kill, but is Chibi gonna take a fall because his Lingus just got popped? There's gonna be some more. Jules is joining the party as well. He's taken a void to the face. It's going into the melt, so he's kind of fine. Chibi's not getting healed up. Why is teammate? And are they gonna go into Jules? I highly doubt it. But that was a big pick off. 27 seconds left on the Tinker, and this is. This is what you can't let happen as a Tinker. Because KS, he stood in here, and there was no way in hell anyone on the side of Mineski could have saw him. It was just very good play here by, by the side of First Departure, so... Yeah, they keep enough the pace, and even without the Clockwork, they, they do can't find pickoffs. 
I'm surprised. I didn't catch that kill, but shouldn't. You can't Tinker now just shift Q the blink immediately into the bushes, so you can't. Yeah, you can, him but you have, you have to have the option set in the in the. Okay, so he must he must not have that set. Um, well, let's see on mid lane now. He's gonna. Yeah, he just he just walks in. <laughs> right yeah, this is exactly what happened. Right okay, there. well, and that was a That thing. was a little bit silly. Look at him. He's blinking forward into the middle of the lane on half health. Man, Jay is playing risky, but I suppose he has got all the marches now as well as his allies to back him up. But still, risky plays by him. But I mean, now the point is, it's ten to seven. Golden experience going in favor of first departure in terms of experience. Gold in favor of oh, Jules could be in a lot of trouble. He's trying to camp that top room, but he's going to get silenced up. That missed chance way too high for him to do any damage. Now the root is going to be found in bot lane. Meld is coming out, but Clockwork's coming in, and Jules now in a lot of trouble. He's just going to be taking a fall. I mean, Elder Titan ultimate flying through, going to get KS really low. In fact, KS is going to be taking a fall due to a nice astral spirit coming out as well. But Chains is going to make it alright. Oh, eight okay. Lobby's going to be alright and. Well, we're mid for a mid, but I feel like losing Jules is going to be a lot more crucial at this point since he does need to be taking up that DPS carry roll from Ineski. Whereas, yeah, I mean, the Night Stalker's just there to kill the Tinker. And the Night Stalker just, like, he's doing a marvelous job because on this side of supports, on the side of uh, Mineski, they are level 7 and 7. They just got to level up on uh, the Rubik. So they are kind of under leveled ish. So they do kind of not pack the punch they do need and they don't have the HP to go up against the super scary Night Stalker who Radiant's just went for the face boots into Vitality attack. Booster and of course Urn. So this is just where the Night Stalker really pays off and now you've got a Clockwork who's level 9 as well so the experience is actually very important because farm is not that highly in favor of Mineski. It, it's now dipping back like 1k gold lead 70 minutes and it's not too high if you're playing with a Tinker because Tinker use like, Tinker can farm up so fast, so you kind of do expect him to do so well. Yeah, and they have to, like, keep it up. Well, both teams at right. this point need to just be able to keep some sort of a snowball up and I do like how Vanessa is going for the Roshan with that medallion now picked up as well as the meld. It should be good to take it down reasonably quickly. And I mean, that's exactly what they need to be doing is just getting any advantage possible. Um, and Jules getting that Aegis does mean he can go in a little bit more aggressively. To yes. be able to do that, that DPS that they need, um, desperately for the team, but ooh, we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to see if it's gonna be enough. Because at the moment, Jules isn't really hitting that hard. I mean, he does decent damage, but he needs to max that meld up, and he, he probably needs a BKB honestly, because that mischance chance coming out from the um, crippling fear. I mean, fifty percent at night, and did oh, your game just freeze? Yeah. Although there's something wrong with my upload. Like some something's using my upload quite a bit. I have to check with my roommate. The server. Freeze. Wait. Yeah, guys, sorry, sorry for drop frames or something. Wow, holy freaking crap, the server's is so hard. Alright, well, Invisibility Ring going to be found top. Alchemist has now got that mech up as well, so that's quite nice. And I do like how Lubby has opted to skip Unstable Concoction level 4, and he's picked up the Grievous Greed. And this game is lagging. Um, anyway. So yeah, Grievous Greed means he can farm a little bit more effectively, and I mean, if he is going for support utility items, uh, like... This is ridiculous. Wow, this is... I don't know how I can play official match on the server. Dyer's I'm so spoiled, but... Under attack. Well, you, you know how, like, on Reddit constantly there's always complaint threads about C? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is why, because this happens all the time. Yeah, but I, I didn't saw it, like, I... Like, we cast a crap ton of C in games. Yeah. Like, seriously, and I, I never was like, hmm, but it feels okay-ish, I guess I'm his back and, and I'm happy for this. But, yeah. Well. Oh. It's not too bad, man. But... Yes, so, uh... Lobby could be rotating into more of a utility semi-carry role, which I like. That Grievous Greed is going to enable him to farm a little bit more, and this does mean any little bit of farm he gets is going to be even more important, and it's going to have more of an impact. And of course, maxing up that stun is always nice, but at this point in time, given how the stun has changed, um, you don't usually charge it up to the full max amount unless you've got an initiator for you, like, uh, like uh, Kai on the Shadow Demon. 
because you're more likely to just stun yourself because you've got half a second to throw it out. If there's any delay, you're just going to stun yourself. But they will be finding out Jesse Vash. They're going to be able to get the purge off. Jesse Vash just throwing out the ultimate immediately. Jay is here to help out as well in the trees there. Stun going to Jesse Vash. The ultimate not hitting onto anyone, but in comes Jay doing whatever he can. Jesse Vash can be taking full. Now Chaos is rotating in as well. They Chats will be finding GG. It's going to get silenced out. He's on the run, but oh, he's in a lot of trouble. There's chains there, like you said, with that blade mail and uh, G just duking around. He's got those familiars. Nice stun there. Stun. Gonna be saving. His he resummons them to more stuns. Oh my yeah. god, what a huge play by G. That was insane. Oh my god, he's making way for the health. No, he's not Shadow Demon with that max Shadow Poison. Just doing some work, taking him down. But wowie, that was great play by him. And now yes. Tepe on one more hit. They get the urn heal. Oh, they get two hits from the familiars. The familiars are just trying to get in range. And Oa, he has that void up. He's going to cast that void. But defensive disruption going to be saving his own life. Lovey with his ultimate on. No, they're going to be able to get down Kai. And Lovey with his ultimate on. Regenerating way too fast. They can't stop him. Plus he's got that mech. But Jay's coming back in. Jesse Bash is here. Lovey's charging up that stun. He wants to fight. And he's going to get neutered down. Jay getting the last hit there. But now Chibi's coming to join the fight. He is going to be taking down Oa. But immediately... That march of the machines is going to cancel that sleep coming out from Jesse Vash. Now Jay needs to get out of here. He's low on mana. He has got that blink dagger up. He's bottling himself up. Will TP out and... What a long team fight. 14 to 11 now. So in favor of first departure, but Jay is still leading that net worth chart. The freaking plays by G. Holy god. This this guy's got some that micro was huge. skills. Like, and it completely uh, won them the team fight. They were, they were on the run. They couldn't get anything done. Yeah, they picked up a kill. Uh... Well, they picked up a kill onto Chains just because of this, and later on, of course, with everyone who, who like chased him, and just completely turned around. And it was just G, one man army, pretty much. Oh, there's gonna be a hex up onto J. Wow, and Chibi now getting hexed up, and even an Earth Splitter coming through. But so this is gonna be the th the the time of the match where the Tinker is gonna be incredibly annoying. You can always blink to the tree. He can always blink forward in order to pick you off if you're a Morphling. And yeah, he's got a scythe, so. With a level 2 in this rearm, it's always going to be enough. Oh, and bottom lane, KS. Bottom lane. Yeah, he's just showing up at this point. He's going to get him down. Nice disruption, going to save. KS for the time being. Jay's going to drop very low. He's, in fact, going to go down. Chibi now on the run as well. But the march is just destroying him. Jules, oh, the hook by Chains. Oh. Nails it in onto Jules. He tries to get away. Not going to happen because the sent rewards are here. Nicely done there. Rubik even joining the party as well. Oh, uh, oh no, the Lincoln Sphere is going to save him for now, but he's still going to get dropped by the by the Visage. Where are the Familiars? I can't seem to find him. They're coming in very slowly, <laughs> but they're still on pursuit. Ooh, Kai is not going to get away from this one. It looks like they're going to guess wrong. Can they TP? Oh, no, he can't. He, can't. he doesn't <laughs> he's, even find He's just like, I accept my fate. <laughs> I'm not going to waste 135 gold. Um... But wow, what a turnaround in the fight. And taking down Chibi is so important because not only was that a dominating streak, which is around about 600 gold, if I recall correctly, he was getting so close to picking up that Ethereal Blade. And now he's back down to 2k gold, which is where he was when they fought on the top lane. I checked his gold then. So, I mean, delaying that Ethereal Blade is what they need to do because once he gets that up, he's going to be able to just trash the Tinker. And it's going to force Jay to probably pick up on Lincoln Steel. And now, in addition to taking down the enemy carry, they're going to be able to get this tower off. So Jay's back up, Hex is back done, and oh, Lubby could be in a bit of trouble. Lubby just kind of running forward. No, actually, Jay is going to play a little bit of cat and mouse and will actually TP out. Lubby's going to stun himself, and this could be fantastic. Lubby going to stun himself in the creep wave, and yep, this is going to be possibly a free kill for Jay. Jay's going to TP back in, he's going to get the rocket off of laser. No, he's stuck in the trees. He can't do it. He will get the Hex off though, but KS is there. He's going to blink in, but Lubby pops that mech and will be able to make it out okay. He knows he can't go in with KS defending him. So we'll just spend like, as many rockets as possible. Look at those rockets just doing so much damage. You know, you know what? what? I want to see, I want to see Arganim Scepter. Yeah, absolutely. And how Jace plays this Tinker, I'm I'm not going to say once uh, Like, I'm not going to say anything about uh, Tinkers again. Like, this Tinker has played how it's done. Just fight, fight, fight. Get a scythe up. Fight, fight, fight. Get something up. Fight, fight, fight. You're not going to fight? Well, you better start doing so. And uh, speaking of fighting, bottom lane, Templar Assassin just got completely dropped there. Everything used on her, but who cares? You got a kill on her. And now, E Blade is gonna be 600 gold off. No, a bit more, of course, 900 gold. So, yeah, Chibi's gonna have it kinda soon ish. And the ganking squad's through. They're gonna find the hook onto Oa, but of course, he can just lift out, chains out his own cogs, but it's not gonna be enough, I guess. Void. Doesn't need it. 
Tills just seem to be going the way of a supply train. This is not what they want. They do not want this nice stalker to pick up, um, you know, any more items. And that BKB is going to be coming very, very soon on him. And Jay, especially, he needs to start harassing Chibi. Chibi is now on 2.9k gold, so Ethereal Blade is nigh but inevitable. And they need to stop that. Once he's got that Ethereal Blade up, Jay is just delicious, sticky, yummy, yummy food in Chibi's tummy. Yeah, absolutely. 200 gold. He needs to get a kill on him now. Why is he disrupting him? Uh, Anyways. He illusions to push. Oh, so he can he can make a, a replicate of himself. Ah, oh, damn! This is so smart. Of course. Oh man, I'm so dumb. Why don't I think about those things? It's so smart. If you've got a morphling replicate, it's it's so incredibly strong, and you can like always just bait with it, because usually morphlings can't replicate themselves, only like with this trick. So there's gonna be a lot of stuff wasted if he baits it out correctly. So that's just very cute play, and we see, we saw in the last game how well. Um, a Morphling Replicate can fool those guys. There was even a Lion Finger used and... Yeah. Also Chain's pickup of the Cloak. Um, of course he's going for the Pipe. But just a just a casual Cloak is very good in general. Oh, they're gonna go. Yeah, they're oh, gonna go on Chain's. Work. He's is gonna he get, get hexed up. Down? Jay just doing what he can. Another Hex yeah. coming out. Laser. God, he just got absolutely destroyed. Stop. Popped into pieces. But Chibi has got the Hero Blade up now. Mm -hmm. And game is gonna get reasonably hard now. They're spotting Chibi out. They know he's around there. Picking up that ethereal blade, and now who's his primary target gonna be? I mean, Jules almost got that desolated, but it's probably not gonna be enough because Chibi now is just gonna be a, uh, you know, absolutely just wrecking one of the supports. There's so many primary targets for this. I mean, Elder Titan, you probably can't take him down instantly, but Visage almost definitely can. Um, as long as you get rid of his magic resistance, it's gonna be uh, quite nice. Mm -hmm. uh, Rubik, of course, and Tinker. Tinker is going to be just target number one. And they will be going in on him. Will they get the hex off? They will get the hex off. Oh, there no, we go. And now Oh coming in with the lift. He did get the adaptive story. No, he did get the ethereal really blade, but not the adaptive. Oh, and, look uh... at the damage already. Like, there was just an ethereal blade, and he dropped to half HP. Of course, there was a soldering goose twice and all that jazz, but yeah, it's just very hard to do now. And Jay has got like no HP whatsoever. And... Yeah. Even with the hex, he's ridiculously squishy. Yep, absolutely. That was Only one. I mean, I wish he could have done that earlier. They needed to speak Chibi off before he got up that, uh... Mm. There's... Uh, no, uh, Link, it's... Not Link, it's... No, mid lane, though. They're the gonna find one more. Yeah. Oh, close. Oh. Night Stalker, what a nice shoot, because he anticipated the blink forward, so he went to the top side of things, and of course, the... It is night, so currently there's pretty much no vision on the side of uh, Mineski. Smart play here. Very good play by Case. And he's got a BKB. 10 seconds on it. He's got his face up. He's got a casual vitality booster. So, yeah, nice. Like, it's looking reasonably strong. And of course, he's a sort of an early game hero, but he did his job. Like, yeah, he died five times, but who cares? He just nailed down the Tinker, like, twice. But. Well, that's all he needs to do. I mean, Nightstalker, Clockwork, Alchemist. I mean, their primary roles are just to get into the middle of the team fight and say. You know, look at me. If you don't look at me, I'm gonna do damage. If you do look at me, oh wow, nice sleep oh, on KS there. He will be able to make it out from that. Okay, not gonna nice shit onto that, but could have been, could have been a cute little pick off there if they did manage to get it. But yeah, I mean, it doesn't matter if the nice stalker dies. Really, I mean, of course, they don't want to feed the enemy, but it's one of those things about being a tank initiation hero is that your role yeah. is to initiate the team fights, and if you get picked off. Well, it doesn't matter because it means they used a whole bunch of nukes, disables, hexes, stuns, you know, all of that they used it onto you rather than onto the carry. So, mm -hmm. dying is going to be a not a huge deal. Um, I mean, obviously you don't want to die, but, you know. Yeah, also, then, yeah. if you think about it, um, he can just go straight to Jesse Vash and pum punch him in the face. Like, each and every team fight, Because with the BKB activated, he can just do it. And then Jesse Vash has to play super defensively and can't get down his Astro Spirit on the Morphling. And if this doesn't happen, the Morphling is just going to wreck face. Because all his armor is going to be so huge. I mean, right now it's okay-ish. He's got 23 armor, which is already quite nice. But there's going to be a lot more coming up. And yeah, it just it's just a very good pickup for KS. Also, I want to see Lobby picking up a Blade Mail. Just because yeah, he can kill be really the Tinker then on his own with Chain's help. Because those guys together just played melee up. That could work. Yeah. Okay. Oh, in they go. Jay gonna be able to get that hex over to KS. No mana for rearm though, really. And it looks like he's gonna be able to get out okay, even using that earth splitter. But now BKB is gonna be on KS just so he can TP out. Because at the same time, behind that fight, in they come, taking it down. Poor Tepe, he gets left alone. There goes Kai, and oh, wanting to chase after that uh, 
Alchemist, but not going to be finding it. Oh, uh, stealing the Acid Spray, so that's actually quite nice. Roshan is back up, they know he's back up, so that is the ideal spell to steal if you want to go Roshan quickly. They've got the Dezo, they've got the Mel, they've got the uh, Acid Spray now, and they've also got the Medallion, so... I mean, that is going to be one quick Roshan. Oh, should be just picking off a, a Visage from there. G does have that uh, Arganim Scepter up, so there's three to spare, though. Well, not to spare. Well, you don't want to lose them, because they're so expensive. But yeah, yeah, you got a good point there. And also, I have to hand it to Oa. Usually what, what the Rubik's do, they just steal whatever the hell they get. And this time around, he, he was waiting like really patiently until there was an acid spray. And then he stole it, and he's got it, and this is just as you pointed out. Immediate rotation just to Roche. They can just do it, because there's a Tinker, and the Tinker can just defend every freaking lane. Even if there's like four guys top lane, there's just gonna be double march. And there's no one who can push down the tier 1. And checking in the towers, yes, the bottom tier 1 died, the mid tier 1 died as well. But the top tier 1 still st stands, and this is kind of very important for Tinker. Oh, the hook is just narrowly gonna miss Jay. Of course, this would have been kind of a suicide, but with the blade melt pickup, it's gonna be... It, it would have been alright. And they're just gonna pick up the Roche. Templar Assistant's gonna pick it up, and... Yeah, top Dyer's lane still stands. Out. But this time around, it's gonna be so close! No! Oh, that was incredibly close. Well, last T1 tower of the game going down there. Last T going to with KS, I'm sure Chibi would have liked it, but he is getting reasonably rich, and this is the point where Maneski do have to watch out. They are definitely still in this game, and they're probably going to wait for that BKB to be picked up onto Jules. Like I said, that BKB is absolutely essential when you're versing a Night Stalker who's got 50% miss chance. But still, I mean, against this Morphling, you don't want to drag it too late. And Jules now could be taking a fall. He's got a haste rune. He's looking very aggressively. If you get that melted off onto Lubby, you probably one hit him. But it looks like he's going to just back out because Jay is playing so crazily. All oh, by his lonesome. He's going to get silenced up by Kai. He does get the, sorry, KS. He does get the hex off into KS. So KS might actually take a fall there. But no, in comes nice. Teams now. With a Blade Mail Pop, will take him down. Jules still not in the area. He just kind of ran around in circles here for a little bit and... Yeah, Jay's pinging out saying, what the hell was that, Jules? Why didn't you come help, bro? You had a haste rune. You were right behind me. You could have done something. But no, Jules um, just decided to, to well, just he was, run around. Well, he was somewhere around here or something, so there was He was, no he was in here when Jay was here. And then he, like, ran back up around rather than just going, like, straight through. But so, Jay oh, just feeding a up. kill there. Ooh. Oh, that was a TP out. Kind of close. Okay. Yeah, you know, Chibi kind of starts to hurt now. And yeah, I want well to see him picking up. Hmm? Yeah, what do you want to say? I just want to see him picking up the Manta Star. So yeah. he can, like, split Once I've got that. As soon as he's got that, it's going to be very, very game hard for Mineski. I mean, Mineski have got a really good early game lineup, but late game they're really lacking, I suppose. I mean, Elder Titan is good at all stages of the game, just with that natural order, but I guess this is kind of the peak time for Mineski. And Golden Experience are just slowly but steadily. Um, dropping down in their favor, which is what they want, but they need to capitalize on it now because, you know, very, very soon, Morphling's going to snowball, he's going to go into a team fight, get a rampage, and then it's going to be GG. So they need to make something happen now before it's too late. Yeah, and we all know how well a Morphling gets scared. Uh, if you think about from with Trust, he's just playing one of the most amazing Morphlings ever. And of course, he does uh, quite well as soon as he's like 5 slotted. And Rubik, oh, uh, it's gonna be the shotgun. 200 HP still remaining after his magic wand use. And nice familiar stuns once again. Amazing play by the Visage here. This is just very good in general. And Labi now stuns himself. Maybe this should be an opening here. If there's gonna be some very aggressive tinker rotations coming in, it doesn't look like so far. Of course, Templar Assassin is on the top lane trying to do something here to the towers, put push a bit. But there's gonna be chains. Is he gonna find the hook? It will be. Why doesn't he go for it? Gerd. First team can come at any point. Yeah, I guess, I guess Tinker is the big deal here. And what do you think of Tinker and Dagon 1? I think it's a good item because he can instantly kill off supports like the Shadow Demon, he can get Lovey quite low. Plus, it's really nice to pop that Lincoln Sphere. Mm -hmm. okay. I mean, Rocket doesn't pop it. The laser, you want that laser active to take out the weight, sorry, the physical hits from the Morphling. Since Morphling hits hard, I mean, he's hitting for about 200 to go. So laser is, what, 3.5 seconds of miss or something? Uh, 3 seconds of missing all attack. So you want to hit that onto Chibi, and you can't use it to pop that Lincoln Sphere. So I think that Dagon is honestly a pretty good pick up this game. Yeah, okay. I, I was just thinking about the mana cost, because 180 mana cost in level 1, 
So it's kind of expensive in order to pop the Lincolns, but of course, just as you said, it has this double use of the killing supports in the, just a second, and yeah, I can see that working out. It's kind of nice, but I still wouldn't mind seeing an Acceptor, and he's now up to 3.4k gold. You could go for the Manta style, because this is some uh, very pushing Radiant's style, aggressive stuff coming out here from Jay. So maybe he's just going to go for the Manta and, and, and got like... Yeah, each and every time he's going to have some illusions ready, uh, which is something we don't see a lot, but it's viable. Um, oh, speaking of viability, Jesse Bash, he's forced to pop his BKB. Um, okay. And Jimmy doesn't care, he's got a haste rune, still half duration, and Jesse Bash is forced to TP out. Um, okay, close call here. And now Kes, he's gonna drop the Rubik, nice force up to the high ground, still gonna nail the down. Nail it down. English is so hard today, and uh, there's gonna be an hex. They're gonna go in. Wow, they're diving to threes. I'm not sure about this decision. Stun flying out onto G. What an amazing stun now by Jesse Vesh. He's gonna go in. He's gonna take down Chibi with the right clicks. And of course, Jay helping out tremendously. Lobby's now on the run as well. He's gonna go and blink Dagger out of the way. But is it gonna be enough? Because here are the super annoying familiars. Micro like a boss and the melted. Boom. Blow him up. He has got destroyed. Oh um, my god. Well, that's what like, Jay is going for. Yeah. This is, this is how we roll. Like... Level four Dagon now. That's that's something I can I can dig because now it's 120 mana cost on a 20 second cooldown. Mm, okay, I mean cooldown doesn't matter for him, but anyways. Well, good I'm fun, not sure. Good like fun. they dive this freaking way. What the hell? Yeah, that was a little bit like kill hungry. Pump I've got play. a T2 here to take, but anyways. Wow. Now oh. this is going to loosen the T2. They've still got 29 seconds on Morphling. Morphling does have, have Bite glyph. if he needs to. They don't have a Glyph, but they do have Bite on the Morphling. However, with Jay laying down all of these Master Machines, it's going to be really hard for him to defend this. It looks like this tower could be taking a fall. They could even lose the racks at this point. They just can't go in. Look at those marches. You cannot defend under that. I mean, what they need to do is get Chains in there and Lubby in there with the Blade Mail, but this is going to be the racks going down. Lubby's coming in now, stunt onto Jules' head, but those Vistage Familiars just doing a little bit too much damage they, they combined have... with that Desolator, and the Rax is down. Now in comes KS, going to be going straight onto JG, is on the run. He's got Max Souls, he's ready to do on something, but Jules is in there with the BKB pop. Chibi just hitting on to Jules. Jules is just going to take a TP out. He should be able to make it out okay, but at the same time, Chains can take a fall. He did manage to just catch onto Jay. Jay, though, on the sideline, going to be doing what he can. Chibi, he's going to pop that Lincoln's he's gonna take him down, but a nice defensive disruption is gonna be saving Chibi's life. He's strength more so much. He's on 3k health. Holy camoly. No way they can take him down, but still, it's a one for one trade with the racks, T2 tower, T3 tower, all included for Mineski. Yeah, but that was something you kind of. Yeah, but, but, but this was like the play against the clock. Mineski was sitting on a tick and time bomb uh, on the Morphling, and he was not forced to buy out. They did lose the Meteor Rex, of course, this is kind of huge, but they did not lose... Oh, wow. I didn't expect that, because, well, you shouldn't be so diving. far at that. Anyways, uh, diving against 4 when, when you're, like, with a Night Stalker, 37 minutes in the game, maybe not the smart decisions, but still, like, Chibi still got his buy out. He's looking for the next item. He's got his Mentor style right now, so he can buy it very soon if he wants to, and, and not care for the buyout. And at the rate he's farming right now, it's kind of kind of big. And KS got his Aghanim Scepter. So all the items in the world are coming out for the first departure, although they lost their eggs. So how well can Mineski pr press their advantage here? This is going to be very interesting, but so far, just, just you know, tinker things, pushing out all lanes. I mean, the lane's going to be here, the bottom lane's going to be here, and now it's pushing in once again. And yeah. Have you looked at the gold um, recently? Oh, hello. <laughs> I mean, there is definitely a chance for First Departure to turn this around and win it. I mean, they've got that Morphling carry, and I mean, we've seen multiple times in the Southeast Asian scene a Morphling who loses the racks and then wins the game because mm -hmm. it's the throne that matters. And of course, Morphling, if they win a team fight, all First Departure need to do is win a team fight. Take out that Tinker possibly twice because Jay's always going to have that buyback ready. But if they kill the twink Tinker twice, then they're going to be good to just go Broop. It's just that Tinker who's destroying them. That March of the Machines is just pulling them to pieces and my Dota just crashed. So, it's alright be because there should be a team fight inbound. Familiars are taking a crap ton of damage right now, but the very quick reactions here on the stone form cast. Gonna help him out just a bit. KS now, waiting in the wings. He wants to find something. It looks like they want to go and wrap around and try to find some pickups this way, because if you think about it, Oa, he's got a nice point booster, which is kind of huge at this point, and of course he's got an urn, so he's not going to be one-shot as of yet. 
but yeah, he's gonna be in, in just a few more items, and this is gonna be where the stuff gets really scary, because Kai is on the sidelines, Shibby's on the sidelines, now everyone can just collapse onto Mineski's side of things, they're gonna go in, Chain is waiting here, they're gonna bring down Jay with just a bit more, yes, they get him, very important kill, buyback from Jay, is it gonna be enough though, because Chibi is dropping kinda low, he's forced to strength up, there it is, way too much damage going his way, a nice scythe of the vice, picks him up, and another Dagon used by Jay, and this is gonna be, this is gonna be double Rex here. Holy freaking crap, did they do it. They immediately popped Jay, but of course Jay was, was doing the smarter play here and did have a buyback ready, and when you burn your whole combination on someone with a buyback who can just instantly BOT in, well, got a problem. Well, are they gonna go for the Magra creeps, or what is their plan? Looks like they're just gonna go straight through, and so they've got 50 seconds, Jules is just farming. <laughs> of course he is. Um, but they've got 50 seconds now to go for these Mega Craves with the Familiars. They should be good to be able to do it with that Desolator and... GG. GG is going to get called out, so... First of to take the first game. Mineski take the second game. And this is more the kind of play that we want to see from Mineski. Yeah. I mean, they've like, been on such a play. terrible streak recently that it's really nice to see just some more ownage coming from Jay. And holy crap, Jay just MVP. Like, Jay did work this game. But still, GG well played to both teams. Um, thank you, of course, to AOC for sponsoring this tournament, as well as Dapbet.net, Esports Betting, and Dota Talk. And we'll see you guys in the third game of this, like, five-hour game fest. Thanks for casting, Pimp. Do you have to go? Fuck mm, it. I'm going to make it a nice game, and then I'll be just <laughs> working overtime until 5 a.m. in the morning. That's how we do it. Good okay, decision. bye, guys. By the way, uh, on the screen right now, third side of things, our social media, please follow us there. If you like the stream, and we're gonna cast a crap ton of CA Dota in the next future, consider subscribing. And one more thing, if you have Adblock on, if you consider turning it off, that would be greatly appreciated.